Here is how you can crush the French defense. So let's look at the two knights variation first. So the game starts with e4, e6 and now knight to f3, black plays d5, knight c3 and knight f6. So we have entered the knight's variation and here you should play e5, kicking the opponent's knight. Knight will go to d7 and now you can play d4, controlling the center and adding protection to this pawn. Since you have grabbed more space and have a better center control, black doesn't like it. So that is why he will challenge your center with c5, attacking your d4 pawn. But here you can play bishop to g5, attacking black's queen. And here there are two ways in which black can respond to this threat. First, he might play bishop to e7. And second is, he might play queen to b6. Let's look at both the variations. If black plays bishop to e7, then you can simply capture the bishop, queen takes bishop, and now you can play the crushing knight to b5, attacking the weak c7 square and threatening to fork black's pieces. If queen goes to d8 in order to protect this square, then you can play knight d6 check and now black will lose his castling rights. Let's go back. And if black here plays king to d8, then because the opponent's king is stuck in the center of the board, then you can start opening up this center with c4, challenging black's center. And from here onwards, white can quickly develop his pieces and castle in the game, as well as launch a deadly attack on the black's king. So let's go back. So clearly, bishop to e7 is not working. So black here might play queen to b6. And here you can grab the c5 pawn and attack black's queen, gaining a tempo. If black gets greedy and captures the unprotected b2 pawn, then you can play knight to b5, threatening to checkmate the black king because these squares are controlled by our bishop. Black can't allow this checkmate to happen, so he will play queen to b4 check. And now you can simply block the check with c3. And now queen takes c5 and the black queen is here on the c file in order to protect this checkmate threat of white. But now you can play bishop to e3, attacking the queen. If queen goes to c6, then you can attack her one more time with your other knight. If queen goes to b6, then knight takes e6, launches a deadly attack on black. And if queen captures the knight, then knight c7 check forks black's pieces. King moves and black now loses his queen. And from here onwards, it's an easy win for white because white is up in material and black's king is stuck in the center of the board as well as his pieces are undeveloped and inactive. Let's look at another possibility. So here, instead of black queen checking the white king, black instead might decide to protect this weak c7 square with the move knight to a6. So what can you play here? So here you can play rook b1. Black queen will likely capture the a2 pawn. And now you can play rook to a1. And now after queen b2, you can shock your opponent with rook takes a6. And now pawn takes rook. And now knight c7 is a checkmate. So here, after we attack the opponent's queen with our pawn, instead of capturing this b2 pawn over here, black might just capture this c5 pawn with his bishop. So if black plays bishop takes c5, double attacking this weak f2 pawn over here, then you can play queen to d2. And now if queen captures the b2 pawn, then you can simply play rook to b1, attacking the queen. Queen will move to a3. And now again, knight to b5, attacking the black queen and threatening to fork black's pieces one more time. If queen captures the a2 pawn, then knight c7 check, king moves to f8. And now before capturing this trapped piece over here, white has to make sure that he doesn't lose his undefended piece. So white has to play rook to c1 first and then go on capturing this trapped rook in the next move. So let's go back and look at another possibility. So here, instead of capturing this pawn, what if black decides to capture the weak f2 pawn over here? So if bishop takes f2 check, then queen takes f2. Now queen captures the b2 pawn, attacking our rook over here as well as this knight over here. Now this does look scary, but if you do a proper calculation and play the accurate moves over here, then you will come out of this opening with an advantage. How? Let's see. So here the best move for white is king to d2 guarding this knight over here and letting go of this rook over here. Queen happily captures the a1 rook, but now you can play the crushing bishop b5 with a discovered attack on the queen. And with bishop b5, you have pinned the opponent's knight to the king. And look how beautifully both your bishops are aiming at black's king's side. If queen captures your other rook, then you can simply play the crushing queen to c5, threatening to checkmate on the e7 square. 
Black has to stop the checkmate anyhow, so he will play queen takes g2 check, king goes to c1, and now queen takes g5 check. Black will now sacrifice his queen for the bishop in order to stop the checkmate threat. So you can now happily capture the queen back with your knight. And now you have reached a position where black does have material advantage. But if you look at white's active pieces on the board and with black's king still stuck in the center of the board and all of his undeveloped and inactive pieces makes black's game very scary and vulnerable to white's deadly attack. And now let's see how to crush the French defense in the exchange variation. So game starts with e4, e6, d4, d5. And because we are going to see the exchange variation, the pawns are going to get exchanged. So e takes d5 and e takes d5. And here you will challenge the black center with c4. Black will protect with knight to f6. And now you'll attack one more time with knight to c3. Black will pin your knight with bishop to b4. And now you simply play knight to f3, developing your minor piece. And here black will castle and would be really looking forward to get his rook on the open e file in order to check the white's king. And that's what you're gonna allow black to do because there is a hidden trap there. So you're gonna play bishop to d3. Black will be now very happy and will give rook to e8 check. And now you will block the check with your other bishop. And here, the most common move played by all beginners is knight to g4 in order to double attack this bishop over here. And here, instead of trying to give any protection to this bishop, you will simply castle over here. And here, black will not be able to resist his temptation of capturing this bishop over here because he's going to get a free pawn in return. So, he will most likely play knight takes bishop and now pawn takes knight. And here, we have reached a situation where there are high chances for black to fall into our trap. And the first possibility is that he will be very much tempted to capture this free pawn over here. So if black plays rook takes pawn, then you can shock your opponent with knight takes d5, forking black's hanging pieces. Black cannot protect both of his pieces, so he will capture your bishop and you capture back the rook. And now you are up in material and it's an easy win for white now. Let's go back and look at another possibility. Let's say your opponent is already aware of this trap. So before directly capturing this pawn, he first captures your c4 pawn followed by the pawn on e3. So if black plays d takes c4 and you capture back with your bishop and now if rook takes pawn, then you can play the crushing bishop takes f7 check. If king takes bishop, then you can play knight e5 check with a double attack on black's king. King goes to g8 and now queen b3 check for king black's pieces. King goes to h8 and now the crushing knight f7 check for king black's king and the queen. King goes to g8 and now knight takes queen leads to a discovered check from the white's queen. King goes to h8 and now knight f7 check again. King goes to g8. Knight h6 check, king goes to h8 and now queen g8 is a checkmate. That's fantastic, right? Let's go back and look at another possibility. So here, after bishop takes f7 check, if the black king doesn't capture this bishop and rather goes to the h8 square, then you can play knight d5, forking black's hanging pieces. And here black will play bishop to e6, attacking your pieces. And now you can play bishop takes bishop, rook takes bishop, and now knight takes bishop, and you are up a piece. And this should be an easy win for white. So let's go back and look at another possibility. So here, instead of capturing this pawn first or this pawn first, black might just decide to capture this deadly knight over here because we have seen how this knight jumps on this d5 square and worsens black's game. So here black might play bishop takes knight. So you will play pawn takes bishop. And here now if black plays rook takes pawn, then you can play knight to e5, double attacking the weak f7 pawn. Black will most likely protect this pawn with bishop to e6. But now you can shock black by sacrificing your piece. And that is bishop takes h7 check. If king goes to f8, then you can sacrifice another piece. Knight takes f7. If bishop takes knight, then rook takes f7 check. If king takes rook, then you can see the king is wide open over here and he cannot stop the deadly attack of white. 
So white can now play queen h5 check, king goes to e7, queen g5 check, forking black's pieces, king goes to d7 and now bishop f5 check. The king just has these three squares and wherever he goes, he is just getting mated in all of these squares. If king goes to c6, then he loses his queen and now it's an easy win for white. Let's go back. If king goes to e6, then queen takes queen check, king goes to c6, queen takes d5 check, king goes to b6 and now queen b5 is a beautiful checkmate. Let's go back. So here, if the king tries to go to the e8 square, then white can play queen h5 check. If king goes to f8, then queen h8 check. If king goes to f7, then black loses his queen and eventually the game. Let's go back. And if king goes to e7, then white can play queen takes g7 check. If king e8, then bishop g6 is a checkmate. Let's go back. And if king goes to d6, then black can play queen h6 check, forking black's pieces one more time. King goes to e7 and now queen takes rook check, king goes to f7, queen e6 check, king goes to f8, queen h6 check, king goes to e8, rook e1 check. So he's forced to block the check with his queen and now queen h8 check, king goes to f7, queen h7 check, king goes to f8, rook takes e7 and now he's getting mated, doesn't matter what he plays now because queen f7 is a deadly checkmate. If you learned something new, then do subscribe to my channel. And now I'll show you how to crush French defense in the advanced variation. So the game starts with e4, e6, d4, d5. And now we are gonna advance our e4 pawn to e5. This makes black's life uncomfortable because he cannot develop his knight to this square. And if he develops it to this square, then he's simply blocking his pieces. So he doesn't like this e5 move. So he's gonna attack your center with c5. So you will protect it with c3. And he will attack one more time with knight to c6. And now you will play knight to f3. And now queen to b6 attacking the center one more time. As well as eyeing the b2 pawn over here. And here now you will play bishop to d3. If black acts greedy over here and captures your d4 pawn. Then you will capture back with your c pawn. If he once again captures your d pawn with his knight, then you'll capture back with your knight and then queen captures the knight. But that's a horrible mistake because now you can shock your opponent with bishop b5 check with a discovered attack on the black's queen. He will block the check with his bishop and now you simply take the bishop with a check, king takes the bishop and now you got the opponent's queen. And now it's an easy win for white. So let's go back and look at another possibility. So here, instead of capturing this pawn over here, black might first decide to play bishop to d7 so that you do not get your bishop over here to check the enemy king with a discovered attack on his queen as we saw in the last variation. So that is why he played bishop to d7 first. So what should you play then? Well, then you should simply focus on castling. So you will castle. And now if he takes pawn takes pawn, then you capture back with your pawn and if knight takes pawn, then knight takes knight. And now if queen takes knight with an attack on your e5 pawn and notice now you cannot play bishop b5 check because that's already been taken care of by the black player. So here you should simply focus on developing your pieces. So you will play knight to c3 and now you will allow black to capture one more pawn of yours. Now, here you have reached a situation where black is up two pawns, but you have given up those pawns in order to quickly develop your pieces and launch a deadly attack on black's king because you see black's king is still stuck in the center of the board. So here if black captures your pawn, then you can activate your rook by getting it on the e1 square, attacking black's queen. If queen goes to c7, then you'll capture the d5 pawn with an attack on the queen. Notice this pawn can capture your knight because he is currently pinned to the black's king. If queen moves to c6, then you will shock your opponent with bishop b5 attacking the queen. And now it looks like that you are just simply offering your pieces for nothing. But in reality, it's a trap because if the queen captures the knight, then you can capture the queen because remember this pawn cannot capture this queen back because it's currently pinned to the black king. So let's go back. And if here black queen decides to capture this bishop, 
then you can play the crushing knight c7 check for king black's pieces king moves to e7 and now the black queen is gone and here it's an easy win for white because white is tremendously up in material with an active set of pieces and black's king is still badly stuck in the center of the board with undeveloped pieces so let's go back so let's say here the queen doesn't go to c7 but rather goes on the d4 square in order to protect this pawn over here so here you can shock your opponent one more time by sacrificing your rook with rook takes e6 check and the reason why we are sacrificing is because black's king is still badly stuck in the center of the board and his pieces are still undeveloped so rook takes e6 check if bishop takes rook then bishop b5 check leads a discovered attack to black's queen king goes to d8 and now the black queen is gone so let's go back and look at another possibility so here instead of going to these two squares black queen might just go on the d6 square so if queen goes to d6 then now you can play knight to b5 attacking the queen as well as eyeing the weak c7 square the queen needs to protect this c7 square over here that is why black will move his queen to the b6 square but now you can play bishop to e3 developing another piece and attacking black queen one more time and now here because black is behind in development and he is constantly moving his queen from the past few moves so instead of moving this queen one more time here he will play a normal looking move like bishop to c5 blocking the attack on the queen and counter attacking white's bishop so if black blocks the attack with bishop to c5 then you can simply grab the bishop queen takes back your bishop and now rook to c1 activating your other rook on the open c file and attacking the queen queen goes to b4 because now there is a double attack on this square so no point on coming on this square so now knight c7 check for king black pieces king goes to f8 and now knight takes rook wins material for white and white is now up by 3 points in material black king has lost the right to castle and his pieces are still undeveloped and white has a tremendous active pieces on the board and this is an easy win for white let's go back so here we have already seen how black is badly losing if he captures this another free pawn so what if black avoids the capturing of this pawn and plays a move like a6 because we have already seen both of these minor pieces jumping on this key square and attacking the black king over here so black decides to take control of this important square by playing a6 so what can you play now well you will focus on developing your pieces so you will play queen to e2 forming a battery on this diagonal and now he will try to develop his other pieces so he'll play knight to e7 and now you will play king to h1 just making sure that you are unpinning your pawn over here and this pawn is now ready to move forward and protect this pawn whenever white wants to and now black will play knight to c6 attacking this pawn and now here you will play bishop to e3 attacking black queen and developing one more piece of yours and here if queen takes the pawn then though black is up by two pawns over here but here you will focus on getting the initiative and launching a deadly attack on the black king which is still sitting on the center of the board so you will play f4 attacking the queen one more time queen goes to d6 and now you will play f5 attacking e6 in order to open up this file for the white pieces black will obviously not take back so black will focus on quickly getting the bishop out and then castling his king so he will play bishop to e7 and now you will play rook a to d1 activating your other rook on the same file where the opponent's queen is sitting and this move opens tactical possibilities for white because this pawn will soon be pinned by white's rook so you played rook a to d1 which is a very good move and now black will castle here which looks like a very normal move any player would have done that but unfortunately this normal looking move over here finishes black's game quickly because now you can play f6 in order to open up this position over here black will obviously capture back with his bishop but now you will completely shock black by making a beautiful sacrifice rook takes bishop and now pawn takes rook and now with this sacrifice you have already opened up the g file for your pieces 
and now you will make another sacrifice bishop takes h7 check if king captures the bishop then queen h5 check if king goes to g7 then he will be checked by another piece so he will most likely go to the g8 square and now knight to e4 attacking black's queen and this pawn can capture otherwise black is losing his queen to the rook so queen will go to e5 in order to attack white's queen and probably trade pieces and end this attack but you are not going to trade pieces over here and move your queen to the g4 square in order to check black's king king goes to h7 queen h4 check king goes to g7 queen h6 check king goes to g8 and now knight takes f6 check and now black is forced to capture this knight with his queen and now queen takes queen king goes to h7 there is actually nothing that black can play over here he is completely losing now queen h4 check king g8 bishop h6 attacking black's rook and if the black rook moves then queen f6 and now how can black stop this checkmate over here doesn't matter what he plays because queen g7 would be a checkmate so let's go back so black really can't try to move this rook over here so after this attack on the rook moving the rook from here doesn't really work for black so black will just play king to h7 but even that move doesn't help black because white can now play bishop g5 check king goes to g6 queen h6 check king goes to f5 queen f6 check king goes to g4 h3 check king goes to h5 and now g4 is a checkmate let's go back if here black tries to play f5 then even this move doesn't save his game because white can now play queen g5 check king goes to f7 queen g7 check king goes to g8 and now queen takes rook is a checkmate let's go back so here after bishop takes h7 check what if the king doesn't capture this bishop back what if he goes to the h8 square then you can play queen h5 and here if black plays f5 then you can simply play bishop takes f5 check king goes to g7 and now queen h6 check king goes to g8 and now queen h7 is a checkmate let's go back and if here instead of going to the h8 square if king goes to g7 then queen h5 if the rook moves here in order to create some space for the king then white can simply play queen h6 check king h8 bishop g6 check king to g8 queen h7 check king goes to f8 and now queen takes f7 is a checkmate again so let's go back and look at another possibility so here in this situation i want to show you one more variation so here after pawn takes pawn instead of capturing this pawn back here you can simply castle and your opponent will most likely take this c pawn also so if he captures the c pawn then you simply capture back with your knight and now he'll play bishop to d7 developing his piece and now you can play bishop to e3 attacking his queen if he blocks with bishop c5 then you can simply play knight to a4 forking black strong pieces as well as double attacking this bishop over here if queen comes to the b4 square in order to protect this bishop then you can simply play a3 attacking the queen one more time and now queen goes to a5 and now black simply loses his bishop and white is up in material so let's go back so here in this situation if the queen goes to c7 then you can again grab this bishop over here and you are up in material so let's go back and look at another possibility so here in this situation capturing this pawn is not working so black might play bishop to d7 so what can you play well you will simply focus on activating your pieces and developing your pieces so you will play rook to e1 and if he now captures your pawn then you will capture back with your knight and now he'll most likely develop his another knight and now bishop to e3 attacking the queen and if he gets happy and plays d4 thinking that he has now forked your pieces and is soon going to be up in material then he's wrong because after knight takes pawn and knight takes knight and bishop takes knight queen takes bishop white can here play now knight to b5 attacking the queen as well as attacking this weak c7 square over here in order to fork black's pieces if bishop takes knight then black is completely losing because now you can play bishop takes bishop check 
with a discovered attack on Black's queen. Black will block the check and now Black's queen is gone. Let's go back and look at another variation. So here, instead of playing d4, black might just capture the b2 pawn over here. So what can white play? So white can here now play knight to b5, threatening to fork black's pieces one more time. And if rook comes to c8, then white can play rook to e1, just activating the rook on the same file as the black's king. And now black will play a6 in order to kick this knight. And here you can play rook to b1 attacking black's queen and believe it or not the black's queen is kind of trapped over here because if he takes the a2 pawn then you can attack the black queen with rook to e2 if queen goes to a5 then white can play bishop b6 attacking the queen one more time if queen takes the bishop then knight d6 check leads to a discovered attack on black's queen bishop takes knight and now black's queen is gone let's go back and look at another possibility. So here after this attack on the black queen, because none of these variations are working, black queen might just decide to go back to its original home square. So if black plays queen d8, then you can play rook to c1, activating your rook on the open c file. And here since black is behind in development and his king is still stuck in the center of the board, he will try to develop his minor pieces and castle king side. So he will play knight g to e7. But now you can play bishop g5, pinning this knight to the black's queen. If black gets uncomfortable and plays h6, then he is completely losing in this situation because white can now play knight to b5, threatening to checkmate black king on the d6 square. And that's gonna be a smothered checkmate. Black queen is forced to go to the b8 square in order to defend the square. But now you can play knight d6 check. If king goes to d8, then knight takes f7 check, forks black's pieces again, king to e8, and now black's rook is gone. And white is tremendously up in material and it's an easy win for white. Let's go back. So here in this situation, instead of getting the queen to the b8 square, black might just move his bishop to the c8 square in order to create an escape square for his king. But this move also loses for black because white can anyway play knight d6 check. If king goes to d7, then knight takes f7 forks black's pieces. Queen goes to e8. And here you can decide to capture this rook in order to win material. Or you can just come back to this d6 square, attacking the queen one more time. If queen goes to h5, then you can simply move your bishop to the d2 square. And here we have reached a position where the material is equal but black's position is tremendously horrible because his king is badly stuck in the center of the board he has lost the right to castle all of his pieces are undeveloped and are stuck at their places there are no places for these pieces to easily get developed and white's army is ready to launch a deadly attack on black's king and look at this beautiful knight sitting over here in black's territory. It has got a beautiful outpost in black's home. And this is a strong knight which is very hard to get rid of. And this position is an easy win for white. Do join the membership program of this channel if you want to improve your skills in chess. And now moving on to the last variation and that is the Tarash variation. So the Tarash variation starts with e4, e6, d4, d5 and now here you will play knight to d2 and black will play knight to f6 in order to attack the e4 pawn. You will play e5 attacking black's knight, knight goes to d7 and here you will develop your bishop. He will most likely attack your center with c5 and you will simply defend with c3 and now knight to c6 attacking one more time, knight to e2 defending one more time. Queen to b6, attacking the center one more time and putting pressure on the b2 pawn. And now knight to f3, defending one more time. And now c takes d4, c takes d4, bishop b4 check. And here, instead of blocking the check with your bishop or your knight, you will simply move the king to f1. And the reason is that we are trying to set up a trap in this Tarash variation of French defense. And here black will simply castle. 
and now here you will shock black with your bishop sacrifice so you will play bishop takes h7 check if king captures the bishop then knight g5 check king goes to g8 and now queen to d3 threatening to mate at the h7 square black will block the threat with g6 and now you will play queen to h3 threatening checkmate one more time and now rook moves to e8 in order to create some escape square for the king but it's too late because queen h7 check king moves to f8 and now queen takes f7 is a checkmate now let's look at another possibility that instead of castling because we have already seen that if black castles over here which looks like a normal move how is quickly losing to white's attack so instead of castling if black here plays f6 then you can play knight to f4 attacking black's weakened e6 pawn over here since black can't easily protect this pawn so he's going to capture your e pawn with his f pawn and now you will capture black's e6 pawn with your knight and now black will happily fork your pieces with e4 and it looks like that white is losing material but in reality white has a stronger attack over here so you will simply play bishop to f4 and lay a trap for black because if here black falls in your trap and captures the knight then believe it or not but bishop c7 is crushing because it is now attacking black's trapped queen black queen doesn't have any squares to go and black is now going to lose his queen so let's go back and here instead of capturing this knight if black captures this bishop over here then you can play knight c7 check notice the queen cannot capture this knight because it's been protected by our bishop king moves to f8 and now knight takes rook simply wins material for white also black king has lost the right to castle and is stuck in the center of the board and white is up in material so this should be an easy win for white let's go back so here if the black king goes on the g6 square then you can play queen d3 check black plays f5 to block this check but now you can play knight f4 check king captures the knight and now queen g3 check king goes to h6 and now queen g6 is a checkmate and now i would like to conclude with the question of the day so here it is white's turn to move and what should white play here let me know your answers in the comments box and i'll see you in the next video